loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Today I'm going to tell you about Jesus. Without him you are without hope. You will die in your sins, and you will wake up in a place called hell. And you will do it on your own merit, of your own free will, outside the commandment of God, that God is long-suffering, that He's not willing that any should perish. But you will do it out of your own decision, out of your own choice. You are not good. For the Bible says there is none good, no, not one. You have a problem. You have a terminal illness called death. And the only cure for death is the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. You are not okay. You are vile, you are wicked, and you are fated for the wrath of God. Your religion cannot save you. Your good deeds cannot get you into heaven. This blanking God off, just thinking that there's no God, is not going to save your soul. The wish that there's nothing going to happen after the afterlife is impossible for you to get to a place called heaven. You can drug yourself, you can alcoholic yourself, but you will still face God, for the Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. And you will meet Him. Despite what you think, despite what you believe, the Bible says you will meet God one day. And the Bible says, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. The only way for salvation is through Jesus Christ. You can't wish it away. You can't hope it away. You cannot close your ears for it to be away. You are not okay when you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. You are not safe without Jesus Christ, the Savior. You will suffer the wrath of God. You will burn in a place called hell because you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. God does not love you outside of Jesus Christ. You are unloved by the Holy God. For the Holy God said, Be holy for I am holy. And when you stand here and mock the Word of God and the preaching of the Gospel, you are not safe. You are an enemy of God. And when, when you say that God hates the sin and loves the sinner, you are a liar. Because the Bible records, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. That's God. You're not okay. You will not go to heaven outside of Jesus Christ. Whatever religious acts you do cannot get you to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If I were to ask you, how are you getting to heaven? And you proclaim anything but the blood of Jesus Christ, you are wrong and you will go to hell. You will face the judgment and wrath of God. He that hath the Son hath everlasting life. He that hath not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. You can try to drown out the Word of God, but you will not drown out the Word of God when you face God at the great white throne judgment. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That's the love of God. The love of God that He has told those that are saved, go and tell those who are not saved that Jesus saves. And tell them if they don't believe on Jesus Christ, they will go to hell. That's not a popular message today. It is absent from churches today. Hell. And yet hell is real for
for you town people go to hell. And we tell you how not to go to hell. Big difference. Jesus Christ among the, amongst the world is a word, is a name of cussing. You will yell out Jesus Christ in anger, and yet we cry out Jesus Christ as in hope, as the blessed hope, as our Savior, as the one, the righteous, that will get us to heaven. Am I bragging on what I do, what I am, to get to heaven? Absolutely not. I'm bragging on the Lord Jesus Christ, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confessions made unto salvation. What can you speak about that will be your glory when you die? What do you have to offer after you die? When death comes, where will your eyes be open to? Will you be absent from the body and present with the Lord, or will you open your eyes in a place called hell? And once you end up in hell, you cannot come back. You cannot do game over. You cannot reset the button. You must live your eternal life by the decision you made when you were living. And that's it. that decision today is now. Now is the day of salvation. God says, now let us come together. Let us meet together. You don't know what the rest of your day. You don't know if you have a rest of the day. You don't know if you have a tomorrow. You cannot say, I'll do it later. There may not be a later. There are many ways you can die, and that many ways of death could happen today for you, that you are hearing the Word of God, some of you for the first time in your life, and for the first time in your life, maybe the last time in your life, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ before you step off eternity. I may be preaching to someone today that this is your last day. I may be preaching to somebody, you may have 20, 30, 40 years. You're going to thank God for that? You're going to thank God for His mercy and grace that you are given time? Because time is borrowed. The Bible says life is as a vapor. It is quick. But you are not okay. You are a sinner in the hands of an angry God. And that God will cast you into hell if you reject His Son. The only offering that God will take for sin, for Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That is the means for you to get to heaven, the gospel that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. No religion has done according to the Scriptures, but I violated the Scriptures. And he was buried. I wish I could bury the religions of the world, but I can't. And yet, from the grave, three days and three nights, Jesus Christ arose from the grave. No religion has come out of the grave. Religion stays dead. But Jesus Christ arose and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And without Him, you will face the wrath of God. The wrath of God is hell. The lake of fire that burneth forever by you rejecting the offer of God, Jesus Christ, the blessed, the righteous. You need the righteousness of God, and you cannot attain that righteousness on your own. There is no way for you as a sinner to be righteous outside Jesus Christ. You need to put your faith and your trust and your sins through the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. You're not okay. You're not good. And you will never be until Jesus Christ comes into your life and washes you of your sins. For the wages of sin is death. 
but the gift of God's eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. You're going to die because you are a sinner. As a sinner, you need to come to the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world. And the Bible says God is long-suffering. He is not willing that any should perish. God does not want you to perish. God wants to save your soul, but He's not going to force you. He wants you to come by faith. He wants you to come by belief. He wants you to come to His Son, Jesus Christ. There is no other means for you to be saved except by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. That name is Jesus Christ. When you read Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4 does not mention Muhammad. Acts chapter 4 does not mention Allah. It does not mention Mary. It mentions Jesus Christ. The only name. You are a hell-bound sinner on the fast train to hell without Jesus Christ. And you will suffer. And you'll be in agony. Because you will not believe on Jesus Christ. The Bible says that hell is torture. It's torment. Being tormented. Because you will not believe on Jesus Christ. You are not okay with your religion. You're not okay if you're an atheist. You're not okay or others you'll disappear in 45 minutes. You're definitely not okay if you blaspheme and mock God and His Word. And that's what's happening right now. God and His Word is being preached to you right now. You are getting the holy, heavenly ticket to heaven prepared to you right now through the blood of Jesus Christ, which is able and will save your soul. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, for I have believed on that Lamb, Jesus Christ, as the saving hope. With my heart I have confessed my sins and repented of my sins to Jesus Christ and no other. Life begins at Calvary. And as you venture to Calvary, to the tomb where Jesus was buried, and when you come out of the empty tomb, believing, life begins at Calvary. When you come to Jesus on the cross, and you turn away, you are damned. You are condemned. You are not right with God. Life begins at Calvary. And without Calvary, without the burying of Jesus Christ, without the empty tomb in your life, without putting your sins through the blood of Jesus Christ, you are not okay. You are not right. You are going to face the anger of God. Hell. Many of you have heard this gospel message week after week after week. You are in greater damnation by rejecting the Word of God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Death is coming. Without Jesus Christ, you are not okay. You are not good. You are not righteous. The only way to be okay, the only way to be righteous, the only way to be good is through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is God. Now, if you think Jesus is not God, 
you are in great error. And you will not find yourself in the heavenly kingdom, you will find yourself in hell with the rest of religion. If your ministry prophesies that Jesus came in 1914, you are amongst liars. If you are in a religion that says, believe on this woman, you are a liar. And your religion is a liar. If you are in a religion of the Koran, it's a lie. The Holy King James 1611 Bible, Jesus Christ, who is God, is the way, is the truth, is the life. And the only access you have to God the Father. Anything else? You are not okay with God. You walk on by the Word of God being preached without doing anything about it, you are not okay. If you mock and ridicule the Word being preached, you are not okay. And don't even try to say you're a Christian. I'm a Christian, but I hate what he's doing. That's not found in the Bible. You are not okay. You are in the hands of an angry, wrathful God who cast you into hell for all eternity. It's about time you got the Bible preached to you about the truth, about the life, about a burning hell. Many of you are going to go to church tomorrow morning and you'll never heard a message like this ever through that pulpit that you attend. Because your preachers are afraid to preach this message. They want coins and dollar bills for their living. And when they don't preach the gospel, the bleeding atonement of Jesus Christ, they don't preach about hell, you tell them the street preacher down there in Daytona Beach calls that man a liar. In a penny ways. Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel that Jesus Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures, he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Preach hell. Jesus Christ preached more about hell than he did about heaven. Realize the Son of God who is God preached more about hell. Because he does not want you to go. The very fact that we have Jesus is the very fact that he is the way. He does not want you to go. He is long-suffering. He is long-suffering that He has given you more time to hear the gospel and to believe on His finished work. Jesus, the only mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. No one else. He's a Jesus not to be taken orally. He's to be taken by faith. When you take Jesus orally, you are a cannibal. When you take Jesus Christ by faith, you are a Christian. <clears throat> and don't believe the media version of Christian. The ones that the media call Christians killed Christians. The only way you can be a Christian, true Christian, is by the blood of atonement of your rejecting, you repenting, you forsaking your sins and putting them through the blood of Jesus Christ, the Savior, the God, the man, the man Christ Jesus. Do not die in your sins. Come to the Lamb of God which wash away the sin. You've got to have an act. You've got to believe. It does not come automatic. Not everybody goes to heaven. If everybody goes to heaven... What about that person you can't stand? Are you going to heaven or do you have your own judgment? Your own laws? 
the way to the way to heaven, the way of God, is not what man thinks. It's what God has prescribed in His Word, and His Word says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Whatever you think. Whatever you believe, it better be the scriptural finished work of Jesus Christ. It better be the God that is Jesus. And the Jesus that was sent by God. Other than that, you are not okay. You may flourish in your job. You may flourish in your money. But without Jesus Christ, you're not okay. Things may be going well with you right now. Things may be very great with you right now. But without Jesus Christ, you're not okay in eternal life. You see, the eternal life, there's no time. It goes on for eternity. That's why it's called eternal life. Your eternal life is based upon what you do while you're living in this life. And if you reject Jesus Christ, your eternal life will be in hell. I didn't say hell, it will be in hell. That goes for the young and the old. That goes for the consumer and the vendor. You need Jesus Christ. You need to repent of your sins. You need to get right with God through Jesus Christ, the mediator. There is no other way. You are not okay. Sitting there, standing there. Ah, it's a foolish message. He'll be gone. I don't believe that. You're not okay. The one that will be okay is when he puts his finished work upon Jesus. When he'll step forth and say, Hey, I like what you're doing. You're doing what the Bible's told you to do. Or when you step out and say, What must I do to be saved? As a Bible will be open to you. And you will be examined by the pages of the Bible. And if you will repent and get right with God by Jesus Christ, then you'll be okay. And by saying, oh, I said a prayer, you may not be okay. A prayer can't save you. A woman cannot save you. A preacher cannot save you. Water cannot save you. Atheism cannot save you. Drinking and drugs will not save you. You are only saved by the mediator of God, Jesus Christ, the man, Christ Jesus. The gift of God, Jesus Christ. What are you doing on your part? The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. You will do your part of death. Jesus Christ will do His part of salvation if you come to Him before you die. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess Jesus is God. Do it now before you die. Jesus said ye must be born again. Sin. You are not okay. You are not doing good. Especially as you turn your ears away from the message. Your life can be of wonder, splendor, of newness, of a new body, new Jerusalem, by Jesus Christ. Or your life can be in hell, torment.
tormented, tormenting, and torments by refusing and rejecting Jesus Christ. It's a shame to be here week after week and just watching you walking about and not doing anything. It's a shame that you do not care about your afterlife. Oh, but when you stand before the great white throne judgment, you're going to care. Amen. You're going to want a second chance. And God may even call this loud mouth to testify against Amen. you that you heard the gospel. Watch them. It's like you know, you don't yeah. realize. Exactly. You don't like this, but this is the word of hope. This is. No, they don't want to hear it. And the we thing talk is, all day long about God, but when you talk about Jesus, they don't want to. Hear I try to warn them because you know what? They're going to stand before God. They're going to say at the great place. I never do. And it quite be possible that God may call me back and say, "Remember this idiot?" Yeah. Yeah, I saw him walk by. Yep. Oh yeah. They just. We got the words of hope. Word. And and it's sorry that they don't do nothing. And the Bible says many will go the broad way. Yeah. And we see it. Few. And I very few. About, I think about uh, in our lifetime, if the Lord comes back in our lifetime and takes us up, I hope they go through the tribulation. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, I hope they don't die. People that I know, people that I don't know. That they don't die in their sin. Well, realize, if the Lord. There's no chance. But if, if they the Lord. Have to go through the tribulation, they might have a chance. If the Lord came today, they, they will definitely go through the tribulation. If He came today. Yes. Exactly. Or tomorrow. Tomorrow. Now, we don't know exactly when the tribulation starts, but. It won't be long after that. Seven years. Yeah. So and that's what we try to warn them, too, because if the Lord it's did not come today. It's easy to go through the tribulation. If the Lord came today or next week or next month, they will go through that period. Exactly. And it's not for Gentiles. And if they take the, if they take the mark, that's it. You're done. You can't done. go to heaven. And without the mark, you're going to starve. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. So we preach they the way of not to go through the tribulation and how to get to heaven. Exactly. They can they can hoard all the food and water they want, but it will be well, the Lord's going to change it. It's yeah. not, it's going to be blood. It's going to be. Blood. The Bible says you will not. Do anything without that mark. Like I said, you can keep it in your cellar, but God said, no, that ain't gonna work. It's, it's, it's not gonna work. How He does that, I don't know, but how God does everything else, I don't know either. He has the power. And it's so funny because when you do the public ministry, they make the Bible so real. Yeah. Because God's already told me. 
they're not going to listen, like you told his prophet. Exactly. And the Bible says in Corinthians, it is foolish for me to be screaming at them. Yes, I marked that. But the but message, to be heard. But the, the message, message is, is the power. Yeah. Oh, exactly. And then modern Bibles change it to say the message is no, 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 no. And the thing is, one of the things I'll keep saying week after week is you're without excuse. You cannot now tell God I never knew, and the blood of fingertips off my fingers, it's clean. Does your church, does your church use uh, preach out of King James? Oh yes. Yes, uh, our motto at our church is uh, teaching the Bible, living the Bible. We're not a denomination. We used to be Crossroads Baptist, but they dropped the Baptist. Our pastor has been there for 25 years. And the biggest thing is having them in the true word of God, the King James Bible. Yes. Because the other Bibles take the, the blood that, of Jesus out of them. Right. Yes. They don't right. let Jesus be God. They take that out. Right. And we exactly. stand. We stand as Baptists because that's the only denomination today that's close. To close to, close the, to it. But yes. yet Baptists are. And they're they're going back. Baptists yeah. Out there too. We've yeah. generally been saying we're born again Bible believing. Exactly. Christian. Exactly. We're we're uh, exactly the same. We dropped the um, we dropped the Baptists off the first sign. We're still uh, legally a Baptist yeah. church. But um, now it's just crossroads, living the Bible, teaching the Bible. And we have a Bible institute that's free. You can go to take three years pretty much to go through it. You guys go door to door or street ministries or anything? Yeah, we do. We have one of our, one of our, um, um, we call them, uh, one of our guys that comes to our church, okay. uh, one of our members, he goes to the prison and preaches. Oh, yeah. We have children's ministries. We have a bus ministry. We go by. I do that. I, I ride the bus, pick up my, my bus. Hey, this is amazing. We'll have, we'll have people come up to us, to me. You're driving people away. You're not doing like, don't tell me you read the Bible because you don't. Right. Jesus would never do that. Well, wait a minute. He got in a boat. He preached at the temple. He preached on the mount. He preached everywhere but in a church. Exactly. We are doing what the Bible says. And you see the Bible come alive when you do the ministry. Oh, yeah. It's funny. They'll come up and say, I'm a Christian, but I don't believe what you're doing is in the Bible. They it's like their Bible. <laughs> exactly. It's like, you know, you just announce your ignorance. It's like... <laughs> exactly. And then, like, they, they got a modern Bible, and you're messed up. Messed up, yeah. The new Bible's been taking a lot out of God's Word. Exactly. That's Satan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's got blinders on. I mean, Ever since Genesis is, 3 with, with Eve. Tribulation, the Holy Spirit's not going to be here. Not they Lord. got gay pride ones now. They have, yeah. they have Bibles now that are non... It's, they okay everything. They okay everything, and it's not... Um, There's no gender. No, that's what yeah. I'm... We're no gender. gender. Yeah. No gender. God is not him or... See, my, I'm a Bible marker. I got all the pronouns of God yeah. marked, and it's like... God. Yeah, yeah. And there's all these women preachers out there now, oh, and yeah. it's in the God's word. Women aren't supposed to assert the authority no. in the church. Exactly. You know, or, they can teach Sunday school. They can exactly. witness on the street, but they're not supposed to be in control of a church. Like we know some Joyce we, Myers. We know yeah. a woman who preaches in the street in England, but she's not before a congregation. Yes, yeah, she's, she's doing preaches what we're the doing. Right. She's and that's not. Fine. She's not in front of a church. Right. No, you don't head up the church. No, nope. that's for the man. But that's, they've changed the that in job. Bibles to make them feel okay. And it says it right in there. Even salvation today is pretty much is well just say, say this, this prayer. Say this prayer. Now we got a notch. You know, a notch in our yeah. belt. And it's like the Sunday schools. They do that. With, I'm not Sunday school. The vacation Bible. Well, look how many kids we got. Well, if you got to draw them in with all the prizes, candy, and stuff like that, that's not the gospel. That's not right. Christ. They spend more time right. in the bounce house and doing crafts and watching a puppet show yeah. than getting yeah, the gospel. Us. We just had, um, we just saw uh, creation. We had count creation. And we taught from Genesis, from the seven days, and um, 
how the earth was made so that the kids are grounded. When they get older and people start, the schools start coming at them about evolution and stuff, they know how this earth Amen. was made at a very early age. But the thing is, you got to start them like that because mm -hmm. evolution is dying. Yeah. Even science, and you don't know what they're going to come up with next. Yeah, exactly. Because evolution so has died. They have to be rooted in, in what the Bible says, how this world was brought about, and and they have to be rooted in that so that they can fight against that when they get older. That's why we homeschool her. Yes, a lot of the, a lot of our congregation is homeschooled. My little nephew, I talked to his dad uh, a couple weeks ago. I said, I think he should be homeschooled. He said, I'm thinking that, too. <laughs> so good. We're on the same page. So, What's your name? Deborah. Deborah, I'm Tracy. Nice to meet you, it's Tracy. It's been a pleasure to meet you. It's been a pleasure to meet y'all. What did I do with it? Oh. <laughs> it's in a pocket somewhere. And what's your name? Stiley. Stiley. Nice to meet you. That's Rachel Ann. Hi, Rachel Ann. Oh, thank you. He does um, these videos, and we do a Bible study nearly every night, and uh -huh. he, he uh, posts that up there. Okay, cool. He's, he, he's already te uh, teached through the Bible once, mm -hmm. uh, Genesis to Revelation, and we're restarting and doing different topics. Oh, wow, that's awesome. And there's all different other kind of topics. like. And you can hear it on online? On Facebook, or I also got audio. Okay. Uh, enough. So oh, I, I got many uh, other ones, like, you know, Mother's Day is for Christmas. We've got a whole series about Christmas and Santa Claus. Awesome. Um, so there's we're many also. CRBible.com. The Church of Christmas. Okay. Awesome. We'll pray for you. And we'll pray for you. Deborah, right? Deborah. Name of my aunt. Pray for you and keep us in we prayer. We will pray for you. Yes, sir. I mean, yes, ma'am. We will. Yes, I will put in a prayer request at my church for God. We, we try to be. We try to be here every week. It was funny because two weeks ago we weren't. We both had dental work, oh. so and we weren't here. Came up to us and was like, "Where are you?" They said you drove. We we drove you away. Oh. They tried with yeah. we tried with nasty garbage oh, cans. Yeah. They put a nasty garbage can here. With really? fish? Yeah, it was like fish rotten in it. That didn't work. Satan they try every works. way they can, but he's the word so of God. Hard at work. He, he and he's so foolish because he's already lost the battles. I mean, he's already lost the war. Like I said, they don't realize that you know what. The love of God is when we preach the gospel. It's God's preaching to them. They're giving them another week. They get another week to hear the gospel. God is so long suffering. Yes. And they don't realize. They just don't realize that when they get to come and hear you every week, that's just another week that God gave them. I, I love when God lays on my heart when I preach about Genesis three and the garden and all that. Because here it is all. I get you right back to the, the moan of sin. Yeah. I'm gonna perish like this vegetable. Genesis three fifteen. The first verse where Jesus talks about, I mean, God talks about Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Keep up the good work. All right. You have a good day now. I will. Thank you so much. All right. What's the Bible say about a man that's in hell? What does he want? One, he wants a drop of water. A drop to cool his tongue. What's he want? Number two. I'll give you real brief. Number two, he wants people like us to go tell their family about the place of torment. Because you are not okay. You are going to die, and if you die without Jesus Christ, you will burn in hell. And in hell there will be no relief. You are not okay. Without Jesus Christ, you are not right with God. Don't come to me in denomination. Don't come to me as an atheist. Don't come to me, I think. 
Without Jesus Christ, you are not right. You need to be washed in the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. If you die in your sins, you will not be good. You will not be okay. You cannot reverse. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and get saved, you will be absent from the body and present with the Lord at death. You will not go to hell by believing on Jesus Christ. The afterlife is dependent upon you. God has me given the means to be saved. He is now giving you the means to do what you want to do. And if you burn in hell, it is your fault. It's not my fault. It's not God's fault. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. It's all about Jesus Christ.